Okay, we're back looking at the kings. This is Ahab, king of covetousness. And I'm going to give you the brief description of Ahab again. Ahab is the seventh king of Israel. Ahab means brother of father. His length of reign is 22 years. His spiritual state is evil. His father's name is Omri. His prophets are Elijah, some unknown prophets, and Micaiah. He ruled during the 30th year of Asa and continues into the reign of Jehoshaphat. His verses are 1 Kings chapter 16 through 21, 2 Kings 3, 5, and 2 Chronicles chapter 18 through 19. And we're in chapter 21 of 1 Kings. And what this chapter really pictures is the religious crowd of Jesus' day crucifying Jesus. Because this man Naboth has a vineyard, and Naboth pictures Jesus Christ. And it's just like the story Jesus told to illustrate himself. He said in Matthew twenty one, thirty seven through thirty nine, it said, But last of all he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. So the same way those husbandmen the same way they got the master's son and slew him and cast him out of the vineyard, that's what Ahab and Jezebel do to Naboth. Jesus is the son sent down from heaven by the father. And instead of accepting him, they rejected him and killed him. He was the heir of the vineyard. Naboth has a vineyard. Ahab wants it. Ahab and Jezebel kill him, just like the Christ-rejecting Jews killed Jesus. Ahab pictures the lost, Christ-rejecting sinner, and Jezebel will picture the Roman Catholic Church or false religions who aid the lost sinner in rejecting Jesus Christ and killing him. Ahab is the king of covetousness. And while we study this chapter, you need to look for signs of covetousness in your life. Number one, Ahab has the world, yet he wants more. 1 Kings 21.1 and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So this man Naboth had a vineyard. Notice the detail. It is by the palace of Ahab. Ahab had a palace. And no telling how many vacation homes and cabins and mansions and other places. Yet he wants Naboth's vineyard. Out of all the stuff he has, he has the world. Yet he wants more. Isn't it funny how the more you get, the more you actually want? Is that you? Does that sound like you? You have all this stuff. You got three or four cars. You got a nice house. You got a good looking wife. You got all this stuff, yet you want more. And you want other people's stuff. You have a nice looking car, yet you want that other nice looking car that you see in the parking lot at work. You just want more and more. Number two. Ahab wants it because it isn't his, and because it's convenient. In verse 2, And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give it thee for, give it, thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Uh, okay, I'll say this about Ahab. He was willing to trade with Naboth. He was willing to give him a better vineyard in exchange for his vineyard. He was willing to give him money for it. He, he wasn't just going to take it by force. But the fact that Ahab had better vineyards and had more than enough money to buy it proves that Ahab is wanting stuff because it isn't already his and because of its convenience. He said <clears throat> he wants it because it's near unto his house. Sometimes getting something because it is convenient is actually not a good idea. Sometimes it is covetousness. Sometimes convenience just spoils you and makes you lazy and unthankful and unsatisfied. And in Proverbs twenty-seven twenty, the Bible says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. No matter what Ahab got, he was just going to want more. Ahab wants to fulfill his covetous desire, number three, even if it pleases the Lord. <clears throat> Does that sound like you? Do you want what you want, even though you know it displeases God? Do you want things just because you don't have them? 
In 1 Kings 21, 3, And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So Naboth was trying to go by the word of the Lord. He said, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. It would have been a sin for Naboth to give Ahab the vineyard. Because of verses like Numbers 36, 7, which says, So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. Naboth knew it would be wrong to give the inheritance of his fathers over to Ahab, and Ahab doesn't care. He's king of covetousness. And when you're given over to covetousness, you don't care if you break God's commands to get what your flesh wants, even if you have to lie, cheat, steal, and in this situation, kill. Number four, Ahab is king of covetousness, and he pouts if he doesn't get what he wants. A good sign you're covetous is if you pout when you don't get the thing that your flesh wants. In 1 Kings 21, 4, it says, And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. He laid down heavy, displeased, and turned his face to the wall and would not eat. Look at this. Good grief. What a baby. This is exactly what my daughter does. She's five. My son does it some. He's one. It's almost just funny how much of a baby Ahab is. The sad thing is, we are probably more like Ahab than we are any other king. And he's been the most wicked king so far up to this point. Some consider him to be the most wicked of all time. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see much of myself in David. I don't see much of myself in Asa. I don't see much of myself in Solomon. Uh, I'm probably closer to Ahab. I mean, that's how sorry we are. And you need to realize... You're, you've probably, you need to, when you read these kings, you need to realize they share the same horrible characteristics that you have. People today are probably closer to Ahab than they are any other king. And he is so sad that he literally can't even eat. And he wants Naboth's vineyard so bad that, number five, he allows someone to do the dirty work to get it for him. In 1 Kings 21, 5 through 6, it says, But Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. This sounds like a child talking to his mother. I can just imagine him pouting and kind of saying it with a whiny voice. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou not, dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Even Jezebel is like, Aren't you the king? You could just take it. Ahab is wicked. And it's almost like Ahab is more low down than he is wicked. But at the same time, he lets Jezebel run so loose and do such evil and he is responsible because he could stop it. So therefore, his wickedness meter goes way up just because of his wife. And that he can't stop, he, won't, he refuses to stop her from doing the wicked stuff she does. She will do the evil things that he doesn't have the guts to do. Something good about Jezebel is she does seem to care about Ahab. I mean, she sees him crying and seems to be uh, upset not eating. And she's concerned about it. And that's more than you can say for a lot of wives today. Most women have a low-down husband. Most men are low-down. But that doesn't give them the right to mistreat their husband. Jezebel had a low-down husband, and yet she is still more concerned about Ahab than most Christian women are for their husbands. I mean, I've never heard anybody talk about that. She does seem to be concerned about Ahab. Just because your husband is lazy and no good and doesn't show you attention and doesn't spend time with you doesn't give you the right to mistreat him. And just because your wife is a hateful bag doesn't give you the right to mistreat her. Maybe if y'all would put each other first instead of yourselves, then your marriage wouldn't be so miserable. Ahab wants the vineyard so bad that he will allow Jezebel to do great wickedness 
that he would not do himself because that's how much he wants it. Have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever wanted something, but you didn't have, uh, you had too much of a conscience to do what it took to get it, but you made yourself feel better by allowing your husband or wife to do it for you. Notice the deceit of Jezebel. She forged Ahab's signature. In 1 Kings 21.8, it says, So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. So she forges Ahab's signature. And look who she sends it to. She gets the big shot people involved, the nobles and the elders. This makes it seem more legit. It makes it seem more believable. When men want you to believe a lie, they try to recruit big names to go along with their lie. When they want you to get a vaccine, they have the big dogs come on TV and there's uh, supposedly clips of them taking the shot. The celebrities and the athletes and the big shot people. That's so that they can make it seem legit and a good thing. It says in verse 9, And she wrote in the letter, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. So she fakes being spiritual. She's a liar. She tries to get the big shot people involved, and now she's going to fake being spiritual. She proclaims a fast. This is just like the religious crowd who wanted to kill Jesus Christ, which is what this story pictures. Matthew 6.16 6, says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a side countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast verily i say unto you they have their reward you know the lost religious hypocrites of jesus day that wanted him dead they all went around fasting so just because jezebel is telling these people to proclaim a fast doesn't mean she is anything good she's just a fake and if someone fakes being spiritual they are trying to appear more trustworthy Jezebel pictures the Roman Catholic harlot, a big religious mess that is just without God. 1 Kings 21.10 And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. So this pictures Jesus suffering without the gate. In Hebrews 13.12 and 13, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. And what did they do to Naboth? Carry him out and stoned him, that he may die. They carried him out. And they lie about Naboth. It said to bear witness against him. Well, they bore false witness, violating Exodus 20 and verse 16. He never blasphemed God. He was trying to honor God. He never blasphemed the king. He calmly rejected Ahab's offer, which he had the right to do, and it was actually the right thing to do. First Kings twenty one eleven through twelve. And the men of this city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants of this city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. So the big shots are on board with Queen Jezebel. They all think Naboth is a blasphemer, just like they accused Jesus of being a blasphemer for saying that God was his father, for saying that he can forgive sins. First Kings twenty one thirteen, and there came in two men, children of Belial, and set before him, and the men of Belial witness against him, even against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, that he died. Just like they did the Lord Jesus Christ. They carried him forth out of the city. Just like they did, they carried him without the camp, without the gate. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. You see, this story is just a picture of what they were going to do to Jesus Christ. In 1 Kings twenty-one fourteen through 16, Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, and Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. So it's like Ahab was just sitting in his room pouting, and then he comes in and uh, Jezebel comes in and she's like a, 
she, she's like his mom coming to give the good news to her little boy, and he jumps up happy to go take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Ahab let her accomplish all the devilment, and then comes in to take what he had been lusting after. Do these signs of covetousness show up in your life? I mean, just admit it. If you're covetous, just admit it. You believe that you aren't covetous like Ahab, but in reality, you would kill to obtain what you want, even by the hands of someone else, if you thought you'd get away with it. You would kill if you thought you could get away with it. Notice what Elijah says to Ahab, confirming that he was also responsible for killing of Naboth, even though he didn't even put a hand on him. Even though he didn't really even orchestrate it, he was responsible. In 1 Kings 21, 17 through 19, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood even thine. He said, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? The Lord himself said, Ahab hast killed. And in the place where dogs licked Naboth's blood, they will lick Ahab's blood. So you think you're not covetous like Ahab, yet you would kill to obtain what you want if you thought you could get away. Number two, you would sell out to Satan for what you want. In 1 Kings 21, 20, And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Notice that Ahab calls Elijah his enemy. Sometimes when a man tells you the truth, it hurts so bad that it feels like he is nothing better than an enemy. As Paul said in Galatians 4.16, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Elijah told him that he sold himself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. There are people that would sell out to the devil for fame, fortune, and material possessions. And there may be things that you would sell out for. Maybe for a certain person, a job, a car, a nice house, a big bank account. But Jesus said in Luke 9, 25, For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? It takes a covetous man to sell something so valuable. Consider Judas, who betrayed Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. He's a sellout. And you're covetous. If this sounds like you, you're covetous. If you're covetous, then you will sell out, even though you know the consequences. Look at the consequences in 1 Kings twenty one twenty one. Elijah says, By the word of the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger, and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city shall the dogs eat. The dog shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. Look at the horrible consequences to come for Ahab and Jezebel. The thing is, somewhere in Ahab's mind, he would have known the consequences. You know why? Because look what happened to Benadad in the previous chapter. Benadad coveted everything Ahab had, and Ahab would have seen what that felt like, to have this man want everything you have and be willing to kill you to get it. That's how Naboth felt. And Benadad's men were defeated by Ahab and his men. Nothing good came from Benadad's covetousness. Ahab would have known the consequences. But it says in verse 25, But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. People ask me a lot, can you really sell yourself to the devil? In a sense, you can. I mean, you can come to, you're can come going to come to a crossroads in your life where if you go this way, you can have something that the devil can give you. And if you go this other way, you don't get that thing, but you get the Lord Jesus. And it's, I'm not saying that um, once you sell, sell out to the devil that you can't get your soul back or that the devil can get a saved person's soul. No, the devil can't just keep your soul forever. I mean, if you come to Jesus Christ, your soul is going to God. I mean, every lost person's soul is going to hell. Every lost person's soul technically is the devil's. 
And when we win someone to the Lord, we steal a soul from the devil. So in a sense, their soul is already the devil's if they're lost, but they can come to a crossroads where they really give themselves over and sell out to the devil. And in turn, it causes a whole bunch of other people to sell out to the devil. You can sell yourself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. It's not something that's irreversible like it is on the movies, but you can sell yourself. Now, number four, you're an idolater. If you're covetous, you're an idolater. In 1 Kings 21, 26, talking about Ahab, and it says, And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. So he followed idols. And in Colossians 3, 5, it says, Covetousness, which is idolatry. If you're willing to go after the things your flesh desires, even though they are obviously something God doesn't want, then you, ha you make those things idols in your life. You're an idolater. You're covetous and you're an idolater. But you do not have to stay in this condition. It's not something that can't be undone. You should repent now. I mean, look what happens next in verse 27. And it came to pass when Ahab heard these words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. When you hear these words, it said when Ahab heard these words, when you hear the words I'm saying, like Ahab did, you shouldn't get mad and think I'm your enemy. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? As Paul said, Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? I'm not your enemy. I'm your friend. You need to quit your covetousness. Fast, pray, and do whatever you got to do to quit your covetousness. In 1 Kings 21, 28 and 29, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. If the Lord will have mercy on a godless king like Ahab, then he will have mercy on a born-again believer who is in the body of Christ. That is a comfort to me because I'm bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. If he was merciful to Ahab, he didn't bring the evil in his days. How much more is he going to be merciful unto me and you? All you need to do is confess your sin and forsake it. This isn't to stay saved. It's to stay in fellowship with the Lord. If you've got these covetous things in your life, just come to God. Say, God, I'm sorry. I want to do better. I know I'm covetous. And I want to get this sin out of my life. If you're lost, then your covetousness isn't something you need to be worried about. It's the fact that you're lost. And you just need to come to the Lord Jesus and believe on Him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood, he was buried and resurrected, and all you got to do to be saved is come to him and put your trust on him to pay your sin debt. The Bible says in Romans ten thirteen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.